if you are a student and struggling with math if math seems super difficult for you if math comes in your nightmares then you are on a right place because this video is going to change your whole student life after watching this video you will be solving math super easily like albert einstein in the next couple of minutes i am going to share with you that mindset of every successful mathematician who created history in mathematics that mindset is the key ingredient to solve math like a piece of cake i got 97 out of 100 in my 12th math exam and now you will also score above 90 just by learning that mindset which is required to solve any math problem first you have to commit something to yourself this is very important without this the video will be a waste for you now say loudly to yourself that math is easy for me yes say it again i want to hear you louder more louder no matter who is near to you don't feel shy if you didn't do this you will go back to your old life where math is like a demon so do not care about anybody nobody is going to come and change your life only you can change your life so say this loudly to yourself that math is easy for me i can solve math easily math is a piece of cake for me why this is important i will give you the answer this is important to take off the wrong mindset wrong programming in your mind and filling it with positiveness that math is easy for you once you really believe in this then you are on a right track if not pause this video and go in front of a mirror and say this to yourself till you believe this from your within from your deepest heart that math is easy for me then play this video i will be always here so if you are ready completely ready let's begin first i will talk about the most toxic mindset to solve math whenever a math problem comes to the most of the people first they get frightened and say oh my god this question is so big huh? this question is super difficult for me i can never solve this question ha huh? where is the formula how i will solve this it will happen blah 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 but you now you won't say this because you just changed your mindset and then suddenly they will open a help book in which the solution of that question is already given and they will try to copy the solution from there after that they will cram the solution from there and cramming math is the most worst thing you can do about your math so never cram math or if they don't find a help book what will they do they will find a similar question in which the solution is given and they will try to do the same in that question and it doesn't matter that the answer is right or not if the answer is right what you have learned from that question nothing just cramming copying etc so never do this this will only make your math difficult for you and the more you do this the more you will get stuck in this because this is like a spider web so never do this because the question will only increase and cramming will not solve this now the time has come in which i will talk about that mindset i call it the learning plus solution oriented mindset in which you focus on learning trying to learn something from the question and you focus on finding the solution of that question by focusing on the problem you have given First let me give you a tip for solving every math problem in your math book. First, make a list of all the formulas which are going to be used in that particular chapter you are going to solve. This is a proven method to solve math problem. If you have a list of formulas which can be used in that problem, this makes math super easy for you. So, always before starting a chapter make a list of all the formulas which are going to be used in that chapter 
For example, if you are going to solve trigonometry, then make a list of all the formulas which are going to be used in it. Now you will say that I hardly remember any math formula. It is so hard to remember them, I know. But no problem. With this mindset, you will automatically start memorizing all the formulas in your math book without doing any effort if you practice what I say. Now you have a math problem and a number of formulas to solve that problem. Now how will you know which formula is right for the problem? The answer is to read the problem carefully. This is the first and the most important step to solve math problem. Most people never do this. They never read the problem carefully. They do this. This question is of this chapter, they solve it like this, I will solve it like this, I will copy this, oh I didn't quote the right answer, oh no, math is so difficult for me. Ask yourself, do you ever read a math question carefully, ever, without starting to solve the problem? If so, first read the question and then you will know that formula automatically which is going to be used in that problem because you have a list of particular formulas which are going to be used in that chapter. Then do not suddenly start solving the problem. First think in your mind how will I get from this value in the question to the one value of the answer. I have to use the formula which I have. What to do? Think. Use your mind. This will make math super interesting. It is like solving a puzzle game. You have given a puzzle and you have some patterns, some formulas to solve the problem and you have to get to the answer, to the goal. So how will you solve the problem? Think in your mind, what I have to do, what I have to change the values, I have to change these numbers to this and then apply this formula. Make it super interesting in your mind and then start solving the problem. Let's say you got a wrong answer. You tried again. You again got the wrong answer. No problem. You have to try again. Always remember, Einstein said, I am not intelligent. I just stay with the problem longer than other people. So the longer you will be with the problem, the more chances that you will solve the problem correctly. And at last, you will get the right answer. Yes. You just solved a math problem on your own without any help book. Congrats! Now you have to open a help book and see if your solution is right and learn from your mistakes you did in the previous question. Basically this is learning. Learning from your mistakes. This will make your brain more sharper. Now you just solved a math problem on your own. What do you think you did? You made billions of connections in your mind. You are using a trial and error method and constantly learning from your trials. And by this, you will start memorizing formulas easily. Because you will take up a formula and apply that in your question. And this automatically memorizes formulas. I tried this and all the math formulas just stamp in my mind. If you practice this, then you can solve any question in that chapter. Remember, Einstein said, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. If you don't memorize formulas, no matter. But you should have that mind which is required to solve that problem. A mind which has full of imagination that how you can get to the answer. So next time when your teacher give you a homework of a question, try to use this method. This method will make math super interesting for you. And it will be like playing a video game. And please do not go back to what you were when you opened this video. Because there is no other way to solve math more easily than this. There are lots of other videos which tell how to solve math easily, how to become a genius etc etc but there is no other way. They will give you tips, routines etc like I also gave you a routine but you have to stick with something, something in this video or in any other video ok. So take a simple thing and stick with it like if you say I do not want to do all this from tomorrow just do a simple thing like making a list of all the formulas in your chapter. This will change something and you will start 
growing so slow and steady wins the race now you know the way the single key to success in mathematics if you follow this getting above 90 is a piece of cake for you now let's get something practical we will take a universal math problem of seventh standard so that everybody can understand it and we'll apply this method to solve that problem if you are a high standard student then see how i will solve that problem and apply the same method in your math problem this will clear this concept to you more so let's begin take a look at this simple math question this is a seventh standard math question i took this question so that everybody can understand the mindset better in this question you have asked to find the volume of the cylinder of height 5 cm and radius 2 cm this is a cylinder of height 5 cm and radius 2 cm for high standard students just assume this as a demonstration of that mindset i will apply that mindset in this question to find the answer let's say we have a chapter in which we can find two type of question first is the volume of the cylinder and second is the surface area of cylinder and we are new to all this and we don't know which formula is of volume and which formula is of surface area so assume that this is happening and now we will apply the method to solve that problem so first step is to read the problem carefully in this problem we have to find the volume of cylinder of height 5 cm and radius 2 cm for high standard students they will say that oh this question is super easy this is of volume formula we have to just chunk in these values and find the answer but no this is just a demonstration take it as a demonstration and use the same method in your difficult questions so we have these two values first is height and second is radius of cylinder now let us write first what is the radius of cylinder radius of cylinder is equal to 2 centimeter and height of cylinder is equal to 5 centimeter so we have these two values and we have to get from these two values to the one value of the volume how do we get there we have to use one formula one formula of the volume what do we do what we have to do so first we have to know which formula is of volume and which formula is of surface area so how do we know that see this what is the area of circle that means all this what is the area of circle that is pi r square right so we have the area of circle this and if we multiply it by the height which is this then we will have a circle stacked on each other to 5 centimeter height and then we will have the volume so we know that this formula is of volume and for surface area tell me the parameter of circle that is 2 pi r right and if we have hollow circles stacked on each other to 5 cm then we will have the surface area of cylinder so we know that volume of cylinder is this and we will apply this in the, our question so volume of cylinder is equal to so the volume of cylinder which is this formula and we will apply that in our question that is pi r square h so we first have to chunk in the values ok so let's chunk in the values pi is 3.14 multiply by r square which is 2 and 2 square is equal to 4 multiply by h which is height which is 5 centimeter and now this is equal to 62.8 centimeter cube never forget to add the unit after the value in math this is also very important tip for math so we just read the question carefully knew which formula is to be applied first thought what we have to do and then did it 
and found the answer. And this is how you should always solve a math question. Hope you enjoyed this video. I wish you all the very best for your further math studies. In my next video, I will share some amazing tips and some cool tricks which will definitely help you to make math more easy. So, subscribe this channel to get notified for my next video. And finally, thanks for watching.